Welcome to your podcast. What a show we've got coming up for you. Uh, i tell you what. We spoke to uh, one of the people who I admire most in this world. Yes. Ryan Fitzgerald. Oh, God. <laughs> you love him. Bit of man love going around. Uh, Judge Jody was very, very interesting as well. Interesting. Some doozies. You, you've, you have some stuff to deal with. I know. Tell you what. I know. I tell you, the things that come into my courtroom, I can't begin. Uh, this was a woman who was wondering whether she should move into state with a bloke she'd met for five minutes, basically. Mm, and the feedback as well was very mixed. In fact, it was 50-50. Yes. So you really, really had to come up with a solid decision. At one stage, you were scratching that weird wig <laughs> that the judges wear, but you finally came up yeah. um, after banging a havel about... A, a, after banging your gavel about 25 times. Yes. Um, so we might as well rip into the potty, should we? And you know what we do have this morning as well? A very special, exclusive chat. Yes. With John Aiken from An Mass. extended chat with John. Mm. He's going to look into our souls and everyone else's souls. Happy podcast, beautiful souls. Well, Hazy, we're a month into this job and uh, we love feedback here, don't we? Mm. And so I thought what I'd do is get the guru from the Nova Entertainment Network on the phone just to let us know how we're going on this little show of ours. Don't tell me. Yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> you like this? You went straight to the top. <laughs> straight to the top. Smallsy! <laughs> 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 hey guys, oh. I've got some tacos to give away this Tuesday night. No, it's not. It's Fitzy, everybody. It's Fitzy. <laughs> Do you know what? You're scraping the barrel if you're getting me on to give you advice, Jody and Hazy, oh, that's for sure. Not at all. You've dominated this market for a very long time, Fitzy. How are we going? Give it to us. Yeah, no, I think you're doing a great job. I've been listening in, I've been podcasting the show, and can I just say this, the only piece of advice that I have for you is I think, guys, that you might, you got to get out to the people. you, you got to get out to somewhere like Cafe de Villiers in Elizabeth <laughs> or something like that. Get out there uh, amongst the people and just say, we are here, we have arrived. Have you thought about doing that That's at all? That's some stage? advice. That sounds like something we could definitely work with. Yeah, yeah. We thought we'd get amongst the people, but we thought we'd get amongst Andrew Hayes' people because he played at Central's for a very long time out north. And so we thought we've got to go somewhere where people are going to know him and like him, right? Yeah, look, uh, if it's, oh, I don't know. I mean, there is a bit of a thought process that uh, all those supporters from uh, way back then may have passed on since then, but that's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Well, the, the ones survivors, yes. come down, have a look. I, I've got a feeling that you'll rock up as well and people will be like, ah, oh, I thought it was going to be the Gowans yeah, boys. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Where's, where's Maddie Slade? Yeah, where's where? Matt Slade? <laughs> now, Fitzy, you are in Sydney, which is where all the big wigs in the network um, live and operate. Mm. Have you heard mm. any rumblings in the corridor about how, how they think we're going in Adelaide? Yeah, it's um, everybody's been talking about it over here. Do you know the one thing I do? Yeah. do, do, do <laughs> Hands do up in Sydney thing. if you can locate Adelaide on the map. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the one thing I did realise, though, when I moved to Sydney for the very first time was I realised how small that Adelaide market is compared. And, you know, when yeah. it comes to budgets here at Nova, yeah. Adelaide might get li- left out a little bit. Oh, you think? Yeah. That's for sure. But I love that. Like, this whole war of words between Dominic Perrottet and, uh, you know, Peter Malinaskis. It's like, yes. shut up, Dominic. Like, it takes me seven minutes to get to work. I can yeah. get to the wineries in 15 minutes and then I can go to the beach yeah. in like another yeah. 10 minutes. Shut up. How Leave us alone. Don't I, come. I'm with you. Yeah. What yeah. I do love is your passion for not just uh, the Crows and everything else, but the Port and Olinga Football Club. Have we got something coming yeah. up we need to know about? We do, we do. This is Saturday, 18th of March. Hazy, thank you very much for bringing this up. But it's a fundraiser for the club. Um, uh, We need this at the moment. They're struggling down there, so we're putting a music festival together. And our headliner is the great South Australian band Bad Dreams. They're going to be playing, guys, which is great. Everyone knows Bad Dreams. They're going to be head... Yeah, they're baddies. They love their footy. They love their crows. They love Port Adelaide as well. Benny, the lead singer, is a big port man, so they're going to be performing down there as well. And the other one as well, the name of the festival mm-hmm. is Nice Day to Go to the Club Festival, Jody. and oh. this is after... Well, that's Nice Day to Go to the Pub with the Cosmic Psychos. They're my favourite band of all time in Australia, and they're going to be playing as well, Joe. Jeez, I woke up this morning, I thought, jeez, I hope Fitzy plays that song from the Nice Day to Go to the Pub <laughs> Hang on, the, the Cosmic Psychos, Fitzy, uh, have they got a couple of songs and one of them is um, uh, something about a schnitzel? Could yes, that- yeah, well, that was that one. Yeah, nice day, to go, nice day to have a schnitzel, have a schnitzel, then nice day to have some chips, and then they say nice day to have some beetroot with it as well, which is interesting. 
So, so they're going to be playing. We've also got some great uh, SA bands. Colorblind, Placement will be playing. The Bearded Clams are back. Numbskulls oh. are back. And there's a great little punk band from um, down south called the 745, which is the bus that you catch from Colonnades to Port Nalunga. They are going to be playing as well. So there's some great bands. If you want to go get tickets, they're up now. Yeah. You've got to go to daybedrecords.com. So go to daybedrecords.com and you can go get your tickets there. But they're, it's on Saturday, 18th of March. It's going to be a big day. Fitzy, always great to chat with you and discuss all things bearded clams. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Hazy. The biggest breaking story this town has ever seen is you. Well, Disney has confirmed that sequels to three of its biggest hit movies are all currently in development, and that includes Andrew Hayes' Frozen 3. Thank you very much. So the studio has announced that Toy Story 5 and Frozen 3, as well as a follow-up film to the 2016 motion picture Zootopia, are all in the works. And Toy Story star Tim Allen, who voices Buzz Lightyear in the film franchise, confirmed he'll be reprising his role for the fifth film and appeared to reveal Woody, Tom Hanks, will also be back. There you go. This Good news is... or bad news as a parent? Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's mixed news because you know that uh, I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Uh, yep. In particular, the two-year-old will absolutely lose her mind mm. when she finds out there's more Elsa, there's more Anna, yeah, and there's more Buzz, and there's more Woody on the way. Yeah. Wh- who's the snowman? The snowman. Uh, uh, oh. Olaf. 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 There's what a more. character Olaf is as well. Olaf. Isn't he a crazy oh little gosh. snowman? <laughs> Goodness me. silly little nose. And Sven, Sven as well. Yes. Hot Sven. Sven, hang on. Isn't Sven the, um, isn't Sven the horse thing? No, what's his name? Sven's like the, the deer. Pre- it, no, what? Is Sven isn't... How good's frozen? <laughs> oh, anyway. I thought he was the prince. Who's the prince? <laughs> he's the prince. Anyway, who's good to say? Times. Clearly, we're not paying enough attention to Frozen. <laughs> Pass me a bag of egg roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as we seamlessly segue into legendary composer Bert Bacharach, he's died age 94. Um, so some of his hits include Say a Little Prayer and I'll Never Fall in Love Again. One of the greats. And he also wrote for Aretha Franklin, Dusty Springfield, The Carpenters, and Tom Jones, amongst others. Mm, behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, one of those ones. A bit of a thankless job. Not financially, because he would have made a lot of money. Yeah, but writing for other people. Writing for other people, and they I put know. their name on a claim. But that's fine. I know. Though. That's how I feel, just having to shine a spotlight on you, you know? <laughs> yeah, just yeah. doing all the work in the background. Yeah. Says Jody Oddie, <laughs> who's freshly come off the Jody Oddie show. <laughs> <laughs> on Nova. <laughs> Thanks for letting me put my name on this as well. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, Jim Carrey is saying goodbye to Los Angeles, putting his long-time home of 30 years up for sale. Can you have a guess how much he wants for it? Don't look at my sheet. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm going to say what? Between 40 and 43 million. <laughs> oh, I did say I did say um, $42 million. I'm guessing he's definitely got an ensuite. <laughs> you think? Or two. He says, for three decades, it's been a sanctuary for me, but I don't spend a lot of time there, that time there now, and I want someone else to enjoy it like I have. Okay, let's do this. Favourite Jim Carrey oh. quote. I mean, there's this one, <laughs> which is obvious. Boom! Somebody stop me! Yeah, with his big, ridiculous teeth. Yes. How good were they? <laughs> Don't look at me with your big Invisalign mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Mine quite aren't that fake just yet. Uh, Favourite Jim Carrey quote. And get involved this morning. We'd love you to call up and uh, give us a hand. 13, 24, 10. What about, um, that's a lovely accent you have there. New Jersey? <laughs> Austria. Austria. <laughs> Austria. Well then, day, mate. <laughs> Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> what about... Pull over. No, it's a cardigan, but thanks for noticing. <laughs> yeah, he's done some good work, Jim Carrey. He's done some real good work. He really and I know you're asking me this question because you want to see this green comet, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what we were talking about behind the scenes <laughs> this morning. 
So astronomers are encouraging people to look skyward today. It's the best day to spot this extremely rare celestial body as it passes over our state. So um, UniSA's Adelaide Planetarium at Mawson Lakes will offer free viewings for amateur astronomers wanting to catch a glimpse for the once in 50,000 year spectacle. Mm. You going to head there? What a party that'll be. <laughs> <laughs> Good times ahead. <laughs> Astronomers know how to party. Shut yeah, up. Do they? You're yeah, so I'm not rude. Sure. I haven't been to an astronomer's party recently. <laughs> haven't but you? Understand <laughs> the guys really, really know how to take it to the next level. <laughs> There's one at Mawson Lakes tonight. Yeah, You're on. Stuff. We're on. That's I my juice. Come down and have a, a chat with us as well. Come down and get some free donuts, some coffees. There's a little Nova special going as well. Six ninety five for a bacon and egg muffin and coffee. You're not going to beat that anywhere in Adelaide. That's a one one in fifty thousand year event. Exactly right. That's rarer than a comet. A muffin and a coffee for that price. Yeah. Ever felt like a holiday after your holiday? Like after every single holiday for me. <laughs> Plan your next getaway on the What If app and access mobile exclusive deals. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable just in case you change your plans. Booking cancellation windows apply. What if it's Aussie for travel? Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Hazy's on this Daisy. Yeah, good morning. It is Friday. It's the 10th of February. Let's take a little trip down memory lane. Let's go back to 1788. Woo, jeez. How old were you back then? Australia's first wedding ceremony took place at Sydney Cove. <laughs> and Married at First Sight was born not long after that. <laughs> Not really. 1970, Melissa Doyle, uh, born in Sydney. Today's her 53rd birthday. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunrise. I'm David Koch. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mel. Uh, congratulations to her. One of the great voices of Smooth FM. 1991, The Simpsons made its debut on Australian television, and now it's got that special little place in my brain where every time a moment happens to me, you somehow try and compare it to The Simpsons. Do you get that? Time? Constantly from you. <laughs> okay, your good. Life. good. As <laughs> yeah. long as I can be some sort of role model yeah, to you. Yeah, it's like you're defining... Trait. <laughs> the younger generation coming through. 1993, Oprah interviewed Michael Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Jackson. How nervous are you right now? Mm, I'm not nervous at all, actually. You really aren't. Yeah. 62 million Americans watched, making it the fourth most watched entertainment program in US TV history. It was his first TV interview in 15 years. A lot of talent that's, for Michael Jackson. Yeah, that's... But I think we all still watched and went, what's there something what's a bit off about this bloke? Wrong. He's a bit dodgy dodge. Yeah, it's a little bit. 2008, Amy Winehouse won five Grammy Awards, including Record of the Year, Song of the Year, and Best New Artist. She was an absolute phenomenon. And the Grammy goes to Amy Winehouse. 2014, Australia's Chappelle Corby, convicted of drug smuggling in Indonesia, was released on parole after serving nine years in prison. As the full weight of Indonesian law fell on Chappelle Corby, she appeared not to understand quite what had happened. I just, I didn't know that the boogie board bag was so much heavier and different. I didn't notice. You know, nine <laughs> kilos of weed. I didn't know that it was in there. That's crazy. <laughs> you, you guys are crazy. It wasn't me. <laughs> um, and today is the day as well that you're waking up going, hang on, did that really happen? Did Travis Head get dropped for the first test? Hmm. Yes, he did. All good, though. No doubt Renshaw saved the day. No, he got done for a golden duck as well. The number one song in Australia in 2002 was Whenever, Wherever, by the great, the one and only Shakira. Shakira, Shakira. Shake those hips. <laughs> Court is in session. Get your gavels out. Yep. Lucky we're strategically placed just across the road from the Elizabeth Magistrates Court where I've spent some quality time. <laughs> You're going straight to jail. <laughs> and when Channel you come 10. out, because you've done something really controversial, yeah. Jodie Oddie will be wearing her Channel 10 hat and yep. she's going to doorstop I'll you. I'll chase you down. I'll chase you. Sometimes I've chased people into the Elizabeth City Shopping Centre. That's what we do. No stone unturned there at Channel 10. Okay. Dear Judge Jody, I've been with my boyfriend for three months and we have moved very quickly. Last night, guess what he said? He told me he's been offered an incredible job in Sydney and wants me to move with him. Ooh. That's nice. It's a big step in the relationship. I'd Congratulations, have, guys. I'd have to move out of my share house, quit my job, tell my family, but that doesn't bother me right now. I'd follow him anywhere. Oh, that's nice. Would you? <laughs> Would you follow him into the dark? Am I blinded by the honeymoon phase? Should I be more careful? Jody? 
what do I do? This is from Claire at Lockleys. Ooh, wowee. So, Claire, I'll tell you this. I moved from the Gold Coast to Adelaide for love, for my first husband. Guess how that ended up? In divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who we should ask? We should ask John Aiken, maths expert. Yes, we should. We should, absolutely. Um, in marriage when they've never met before. Do you know what I'd say to this one, Hazy, in all seriousness? Like, go with him. Like, roll the dice. Why not? Yep. Like, have a crack. But make sure you make your own life in Sydney. Make sure you make your own career, your own little circle of friends, your own existence. So yeah. if, if it doesn't work out, then you've got, you know, at least a safety net. Yeah, I mean, make your own life in Sydney because, you know, people in Sydney aren't stuck up opportunities <laughs> at all. You know, it's such a cheap place as well. I mean, have well, just have fun, you know. Well, he's got an incredible job. So also, this is quite serious. It depends if he's going to financially sort of help her out too because she's taking a big leap to be with him. Yeah. So he's got this fancy new job. Is he going to help her out? And I think what my friend Jody is trying to say is that true love is blind. <laughs> and it knows no rules and it has no bounds. I know. So go with your heart. I know that Abby in the newsroom has got some thoughts on this. Abs? Yes, I was up in Townsville. I met my ex and it had been about two months and I got offered a job in Cairns. And I said, I'm going. And he said, oh, well, I'll come with you. And stupidly, I went, oh, yeah, okay, fine. Don't yeah. do it. Didn't work out. And like you said, I think if you're going to do it, make sure you have your own life and they have their own life. Because I think that's where it didn't work out for us. We had to sort of depend on each other. So in a snap poll of this little team, two out of three interstate relationships didn't work out when you moved for someone. Yeah, 100%. Hey, Abs, did he ever take you on a date to see the Cairns Taipans? <laughs> I took him because I got the free tickets. Oh, very good. <laughs> Let's get some... What do you think about it? Do you, like, honestly think she should go? Or no, I, th I would say go for it because if the relationship is strong and it's destined to be something, then the honeymoon phase doesn't exist. So you might as well go for it. If she didn't do it because yeah. she was too cautious, she, might regret she it. will always sit there and say, well, what would have happened if I did go? Yeah, and then At least you do this, you'll know what will happen. He's going to move to Sydney, find some sort of Bondi influencer and fall in love with someone else and then she's lost out. You might fall for a backpacker. You can't trust backpackers no, these days. Can't. Especially in Bondi. 13, 20, 24, 10. Have you moved into state for someone? Did it work out? Should she move? Should Claire from Lockley's move to Sydney? Mm. Uh, we'll take your calls next. Uh, quick reminder as well. Oh. Anyone who gets on air gets big wedgie tickets this morning. So we'd love to get your thoughts next. 13, 24, 10 for Judge Jody. Judge Jody. Claire from Lockley's has written in, said she's been with her boyfriend for three months. They've moved very quickly. He has got an incredible job offer in Sydney, wants, me, wants her to go. She said she'd happily do it, but is she blinded by the honeymoon phase? We need some jurors on this one. My initial thought is, roll the dice. You only live once. This could be the love of her life, but make sure you're very careful about it, is all I'm saying. Mm. Make a little life for yourself as well, just in case it doesn't work out. Wendy from Blackwood... Have you moved for your partner? I, I have. I moved about four years ago for my partner. Um, yeah. And what I want to say about that is, at the beginning, just give a little bit of a time frame for the partner and say, look, I'm gonna, I'll come for this long. If oh, it yeah. works out, great. If it doesn't, well, I'm going to move back. Just so that they are aware that, you know, you didn't say, you said you'd come here and stay here forever and that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, right. Just to a few boundaries, yeah. Um, and uh, but uh, it's the best thing I've ever done. And I think if I hadn't, I would have been thinking, oh, what I should have maybe done that, or should I have done that? And yes. how, you know, yeah. Um, no, what would my life be not, like now if I if I hadn't? It may not be happy, and I'm, I'm yeah, really right. happy. I'm, I'm loving life. So um, I think you've got to give things a go in life. You know, I'm a bit older now, but um, I still gave it a go and. Um, yeah, happy as. Yeah. There you go. Love that for you, Wendy. Yeah. Wendy, yeah. completely agree with you. So, so mine would be the the regret of not giving it a crack would overweigh, yeah. I suppose, putting yourself in that situation if it didn't work for me. Yes, that's right. Exactly right. You know, and she's young and she's got a lot of time in her hands, so a life to live. So give it a go. Yeah, good stuff. Um, text coming through as well on oh four double oh nine one nine nine one nine. This is from. Uh, Ella in Warradale says, no way. They've known each other for three months. Cautious mm. approach there from Ella. Okay, treading softly, mm -hmm. Ella. Let's go to Morgan from... <laughs> Random gavel. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Morgan from Murray Bridge. What are your thoughts on this one, Morgan? Nah, definitely not. 
No, oh. what? Nah, I moved to Philadelphia in America <gasps> for a woman. Yeah. And it didn't work. She was doing the dirty. Oh, no. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's one, it one of those bloody Philadelphia Eagles players, wasn't it? <laughs> Oh, Morgan, I'm so sorry. So what? how long did you go for and then what happened? You just turned around and went home? Um, yeah, I went... She lived here for three months. Then I yeah. moved over there for three months. Yeah. And while I was there, there was some messages on the phone that were received from another male. And when I wasn't there, some dirty stuff was happening. Oh, oh. no. That's a disaster. Okay. Morgan's burnt. Oh, He's hurt. Yeah. Can we send him off to the big wedgie to make <laughs> him feel better, please? Well, there's your pain, Morgan. We're going to send you off to the big wedgie. <laughs> I'm sure that's all. Uh, we'll fix oh. that broken heart. Nova presents a big wedgie inflatable water park open all summer at West Beach Parks. Book your tickets now at bigwedgie.com.au. Um, you've got a big, pretty solid decision to make. I know. Because, I mean, you can just absolutely throw caution to the wind and give love a chance. <sighs> or you can potentially get absolutely burnt in the worst way possible. So, like Morgan. two jurors, two completely different outcomes. Ah! And you're not allowed to sit somewhere in between. This judge is so confused. Oh, my God, I'm scratching my wig. What a do I do? Again, you're a certified judge. So, <laughs> okay. uh, when you go to the magistrate's court, the judge don't sit down. They go, oh, my God, I'm so confused. <laughs> scratching their wigs. What am I going to do? You need to be much more precise. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say on this one, I'm going to stick with my original thoughts and feelings. Roll the dice. Why not? Sure. And whilst I say I rolled the dice and moved into Had stage, <laughs> and it didn't pan out in terms of the relationship, I have a beautiful daughter. So, okay, you know, yeah. swings and roundabouts. Swings and roundabouts. So, it's a message Don't here. Don't not do it. Because Go for it. <laughs> um, get in a relationship. Have a child early, <laughs> and hopefully it works out. Is that what's? No. Is that the message? No, I'm definitely saying. <laughs> no, it's the gavel's down. That's the message. Don't interrupt the judge. Go for it. Have a crack. If it doesn't work out, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I say. There, there we go. go. That's my rule. <laughs> Good stuff. Busy gavel this morning as well. So busy. For goodness sake. It's almost like I don't have control over my own gavel. A little bit irresponsible with that gavel. <laughs> I am super excited about our next guest, Hazy, because we have been watching maths with a lot of vested interest. And this gentleman is a relationship expert. He joins us now live from Elizabeth. Good morning, John Aiken. Round of applause, please. Good morning, you two. Oh, it's good to be here. Oh, it's good yeah. to have you. It's great to have you. These yeah. people have come out in Elizabeth. It's wonderful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, and you're on your third bacon and egg roll. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you can't say no, can no. you? It's hard. It's really hard when they're the best. Um, John, we said to you just before off air, uh, you said you're a new show. How's the relationship going? Well, let's ask you, shall we? <laughs> you know well, more than us. Look, as, as soon as I heard you, I thought, well, there's chemistry there right oh, away. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> you know? And talking, I don't know who's... talking Harrison Bronte chemistry. <laughs> oh, I think maybe even a bit stronger than that. And here's the thing. God, I hope so. I don't know who's prettier. You know? oh. I'm looking at you two and I'm thinking, gee, they look good early in the morning. Oh. You know? That's good. Well, you look sharp. Well, I had to up my game. They yeah. said, uh, Jody, Hazy, they're having you on. And yeah. I thought, yep. Yep. I'm, well, I'm sorry I'm wearing shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Never be sorry with those pins. They're looking great this morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the couch. <laughs> on every morning. I oh, know, I know. John, um, this season of maths has yeah. a bit of everything. I read an article the other day and it said you've assembled a cast of um, misogynistic, narcissistic men who have oh. no respect for women. Is that oh. accurate? Well, no, I wouldn't say that that's entirely accurate. I mean, uh, when we match them, we got to look at all different sorts of diversities, ages, cultures, personality styles. Uh, but frankly, we don't know what they're going to be like when we press play in the experiment. Right. And so you're watching along with me to see how they play out. Yeah. And some of them uh, really engage in poor behaviour, mm. uh, but others fall in love. So it's a real mixed bag, but we don't have any particular styles that we're looking for when we're putting them all together. We spoke to Harrison the other day. Oh, yeah, big H. You should have heard it. Harrison too, gives zero bleeps about what anyone thinks. <laughs> Is that right. accurate? Including, uh, including Jody. No. Jody. <laughs> he started to gaslight me. He was very, during very the solid in her <laughs> thoughts towards Harrison oh, no. about Harrison directly to him. Oh, I just thought he doesn't have uh, much empathy, was my impression. You know what? Uh, Harrison is very unique. He, yes. uh, he's unapologetic, as you say. Mm. He's uh, very, very... Uh, 
opinionated uh, and he comes on strong. He's an alpha male. And, you know, you meet these people in, in your general day-to-day life. Yes. And um, when you meet Harrison, he's very charismatic, but he also puts it back on you. Mm. And that's one of the hardest things that the group in this experiment, but also Bronte, his wife, really struggle with. Yeah. What she doesn't struggle with is that big facial expression where her eyes nearly pop yeah. out of her head, don't they? <laughs> yes. You really get an insight into what's going on in her brain. <laughs> yes. Um, John, Jesse. Yes, Thoughts Jesse. on Jesse. You well, love Jesse. I, I, th- I think I like Jesse. Yeah. This is... I think his brain operates a little bit differently than your average male. You know, Jesse's kind of layered. Like, you're seeing a side to him early on. Like, many people out there, they have a list of X deal breakers. Yeah. And they write people off before they even give them a go, and they ultimately sabotage themselves and stay single. Well, that's Jesse. Yeah. Um, but as you get to know Jesse, and there's a big scandal, by the way, that comes out of the commitment ceremony well, I can, I've, uh, this yes. Sunday night, yes. um, you start to see Jesse in a different light. Okay. So uh, he's a guy that you have to just be patient with him. Uh, yes, he's got the man bun. We've got a couple of those, actually, in the in the show this year. Yeah. He, he's got a unique look. He does say things that can be polarising, but... Uh, he's a very interesting character. He has a different side as the, as the show goes on. You mentioned his list of icks. Yeah. We went through ours. My ick, ick was um, when men write ha ha at the end of a text message. <laughs> I don't. I, I, it's the biggest turn off. Your ick was I can't remember. My ick was I don't think I really had one. It, beggars can't be choosers. He's so. <laughs> I, I was, was going to say, Hazy, you're just so easy going. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I just got so much love to give. Yeah, you know? I know. Oh. Do you have an ick? Um, what would I say about my, um, uh, don't come to mind so much. I I don't, you know, I'm, I'm. Easy going. It's pretty easy going. (laughs) Super easy going. Yeah, right. And just lovely. Uh, Can we embarrass you just for a second? I love being embarrassed. Because a lot of people know this, and I only found out recently, which I'm a bit embarrassed about. You used to be a professional cricketer for a long time. Yeah, I did. Back in the day, uh, probably for, for. Ten years, uh, I was I played some first class cricket over in New Zealand, f- um, probably from the, about the age of eighteen to thirty. Wow! Uh, and uh, opened the batting left hander. Yeah, had my moments, yeah. uh, but was also a little inconsistent. Yeah. And um, so uh, it didn't quite go all the way. But I played uh, some great players. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't so, know. That. So we're guessing that you've got a, a big interest in the Aussie Test team. At the I watched it last night with a glass of wine. Yeah. Thoughts on Travis Head not playing? I want Travis Head in there. There's no doubt about mm. it. You know. You're saying that in the right spot of Australia. Yeah, well, yeah. and let's be honest, even even though the conditions are different, um, what I would say is coming off the summer that he's had, uh, he can adapt. And he's coming with a huge amount of confidence, so I would have had him in there. Well, I would say this. You were a sportsman. If your name was Greg, I would have married you, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's... Should we deep dive on that and unpack that, Jody? Because I've heard rumours that uh, you are attracted to the odd sports person. <laughs> yeah. well, I've married a couple oh, of I'll tell you what. What are you if, trying if to say, John? Greg, if your first name's Greg, you just uh, feel that you're in a pretty good spot. So, we're, we've been saying this for a long time. <laughs> Greg Norman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she just likes the athletic guy, you know, that's yes. also the thinker. I understand There's that. Nothing, it's a great combination. Oh, nothing yeah, wrong with that. that is like, that's John to a T. <laughs> <laughs> what athletic about the tattoos, Jody? Are we into those as no, well? No, not so much. Not so much uh, the sleeves. Well, that rules out most of our maths cast because we tend to like tattoos. <laughs> yes, you do. John Aiken, thank you so much for coming out to Elizabeth and joining us this morning. It's been a pleasure. Look out for Sunday night. Commitment ceremony. It's a massive one. Okay, love it. Hey! Hi, this is Harry Styles. This is Harry Styles. So Harry Styles is doing all the major cities across the country for his upcoming tour, but for some reason this happens to some of the big guns, Joe. He's skipping Adelaide, so instead of just sitting here with our... um sitting on our hands, we thought, why don't we send well, a we bunch of listeners? We didn't throw our toys out of the cot, did no, we? we no. didn't. We threw a bunch of listeners to Harry Styles because yes. that's what they wanted. Yes, exactly right. S- extreme circumstances this morning. We put the call out for Harry and said, you've got 10 minutes to give us a call back if you want these tickets. And we didn't hear from her. Oh, I can't the first believe, time this has happened. can't believe that. So, this is the situation where Adelaide gets to swoop in and pick up the Harry Styles tickets. So, let's go to line one, shall we? And Kelly from Yankalilla, good morning. Ah, good morning. Hey, Kelly, we'll just let you know that you're in the this exclusive little standby list, so you're very much in the mix, okay? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's kidding. not true. Kelly, you're going to Harry Styles. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. <laughs> 
Thank you so much. I love listening to you guys on my way to work. And like, this is, I've tried to call up every single hour. And I'm so excited. Oh, that is Thank you so much. Oh, you're very, very welcome. You pay homage to Stephen Bradbury, please. Yes. Because uh, this is one of those beautiful moments. Oh, my God, it is. It's a very beautiful moment. Who, who are you going to take? I don't know. Either my mum or my boyfriend, but... <laughs> oh, it's a big decision. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, decision. he's... Yeah, he's, um, he's been jealous of my obsession for Harry, so we'll see. <laughs> Okay, well, John Aiken's still here from Maths. If you need some sort of relationship advice on, on who to take and how to yeah. deal with it. No, it's all good. Thank you so much. Good on you, Kelly. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, very good stuff. For more opportunities to get yourself on the standby list to see Harry Styles live in Melbourne. Flights, accommodation, all paid for throughout the day. We're going to announce another winner tomorrow. Coming up next, Jodes. I mean, how could you describe him but anything else but top shelf royalty of the Nova Network. Yes, absolutely. And a little, I mean, you've got a few man crushes, but this is another one of them. Fitzy's going to join us. Can I very quickly, before we go to a song, say happy third birthday to Dominic. He is here in the crowd here at Elizabeth at Cafe de Villiers. Happy birthday, Dominic. Yes, Dom. Happy birthday, great man. He very looks, good stuff. Looks really thrilled. Hey, let's fill him up with several donuts. Donuts. And then hand him over to mum. And then see what happens. And just go deal with that. <laughs> Deal with the sugar high. <laughs> We're at Cafe de Billy's in Elizabeth. Come down, say hello. This is Breaking the Burbs with Jodie and Hazy. Hey, uh, thanks to everyone who came out this morning to Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Give yourselves a round of applause. Well done, guys. Thank you so much. Um, John Macon's going to stick around as well. Yes. Uh, we will direct you to the podcast, have it to be listened, because we're going to have a very special, exclusive chat with the best relationship expert in the business. Why do you keep putting an M in front of his last name? It's did Aiken. I, did I say Macon? Oh, did I say Macon? Yeah, it's Aiken. Ah, damn, I feel Jeez. like we could have got away with that if you didn't highlight it. Oh, I know. You know, you, <laughs> I know. Know, you can call me anything. <laughs> 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 have, a, have a great day, everyone.